Zero RB, hero RB, fragile running back strategy? What are these things? I'm going to tell you right now on today's episode of Donuts Talk Sports. Let's go. All right, one of the hottest topics in social media for best ball is zero RB, and it's definitely a strategy that is well-suited for best ball. Now, we're talking very large tournaments where you're trying to beat tens of thousands of different entries. Now, in those, zero RB is often applied like this. Basically, load up as much as you can at wide receiver and tight end and potentially even quarterback and push your running back selections down the draft board. So maybe through the first six, seven, eight rounds, you're not touching running backs. Strategies like this allow you to get as much of the very, very high scoring ceiling wide receivers, tight ends, and quarterbacks while taking those running backs who potentially could land themselves in an RB1 role if A, B, and C potentially happens. It's a volatile choice, but it's definitely something that works very well on these websites where maybe someone like James Conner or Kenyon Drake end up getting several weeks per year where they're starting because the starter is out. Latavius Murray, if Camara goes out, you know, these types of targets can win you your league. If Delvin goes down for X amount of weeks and you have Alexander Madison, now you've got a starting running back. And on underdog fantasy, you only need two running backs per week. Now, loading up on all those wide receivers and tight ends and quarterbacks in the beginning allows you to really fill out your roster in the places that are very hard to fill out sometimes. Now, wide receiver, you can get four great wide receivers to fill up your three wide receiver spots and your flex position. This is not my pick of strategies. I'll tell you why in a second. Now, hero RB. This is my favorite. This is where you pick a running back, hopefully a stud in the first round. And from there, you're going to load up on wide receivers and push everything else down the draft board. You get that one running back. If you're lucky enough, you're getting a top three or four pick. You're able to get McCaffrey, Dalvin, Kamara, or Derrick Henry. You feel confident about whom you've chosen. And then you get a bunch of high upside players, hopefully a wide receiver in the next two or three picks. This often will end up getting you people like, you know, DK Metcalf and Justin Jefferson at the 2-3 turn after you've already chosen one of your top and running backs. It's a very strong strategy to give you a lot of elite scoring at the beginning of your lineup. From there, you're going to look for maybe three more running backs later in the draft to fill out the rest of your roster. Again, Ronald Jones Jr., James Conner, these types of guys who you can get, you know, ADP of 90th or further back. You know, uh, Naheem Hines, someone like that who can be a fourth running back who can provide you with several weeks of starting value. Again, you only need two running backs. Fragile running back strategy. What the heck is that? A fragile running back? Well, basically what you're looking at is trying to grab as many running backs as you can through the first several rounds. Maybe your first three picks of the draft are running backs. And the reason why you do this is because wide receivers deep. And if you can grab three studs in the beginning and you're able to focus everywhere else afterwards... The goal is hoping that those three stay healthy enough to provide you with some sort of starting value, at least two of them per week over the course of the season. And then you go super deep at the other positions. You're rolling out three quarterbacks, you know, two, three tight ends. You've got eight to 10 wide receivers, and you are allowing four wide receivers per week to end up as your four starters, you know, three wide receivers and a flex. And I think that is probably a good way to look at how you should use that flex position. And you've invested in a lot of higher upside wide receivers who might be a little bit more volatile, right? Because you didn't get those first three rounds being a wide receiver pick, which means you're not getting a wide receiver probably within your first 40 picks or so. That doesn't mean you don't have good ones. Robert Moore, Cooper Cup, Adam Thielen, these guys are all in the 40s right now. So you're still getting solid wide receivers. You can get uh, one, you know, one of those three. You could probably get T. Higgins. Uh, you can grab many solid wide receivers here. You know, Mike Williams, uh, Michael Gallup. These are fine options who will round out the rest of your lineup. Now, it's just a few strategies I kind of want to talk about for quarterback and tight end. Now, tight end's one of them where I think if you get one of those studs at the top, Kelsey, Waller, Kittle, you know, if you grab one of those three, I'm not touching the tight end position towards the end of the draft. I've already inherently invested quite a high draft capital on that stud tight end. And if they don't pay it out, I'm probably a sitting duck. That lineup's a lame duck, I should say, no matter what anyways. Now, if I have them and they do explode, they pop off, I invested into them as if they were going to, all I need is somebody hopefully who can provide me value on the off chance that they have two or three bad weeks and the bye week as well. So a guy like Jared Cook that you can get 154th in the draft right now in underdog fantasy, 
Grab someone like that as your backup tight end. He'll provide you with some touchdown value. He's had six or seven in three or four straight years. Might not gobble up 100-plus targets, but he only needs to provide value a few times per year to make up for the bad week or two that you might get from the stud like Kelsey. Now, at quarterback, this is a very deep position. It's also a position where you have three or four quarterbacks who are going to score a high-end amount of points, and then the drop-off to the next level, it's not terribly steep. You might have 400 points from Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and it's going to drop down to 380, 375, 370, and you'll have guys like Tom Brady scoring 340 points. Can he make up those points? That's 60 point differential over the course of 17 weeks that's three points per week yeah he can and most likely you're able to make up with that because you're not investing a fourth or a fifth round pick on these high-end quarterbacks you're able to use that and go get yourself a Robert Moore who might be a better option because then you're grabbing Tom Brady Aaron Rodgers in the 90s honestly there's so many different strategies when you're going into this I think going into it with a guideline that you're trying to follow some type of strategy you like to do, but don't force it in there. That's the most, that is probably the best advice I can give you is when you're doing these drafts, don't force anything in. If it, if something is not working immediately, hit the eject button. It's okay. You still have 16, 17 other rounds. If things are not going well, right off the rip, you can bail on it. I think knowing what these strategies are, allow you to pivot. If something's not working, you go in there wanting to select, uh, you know, a, a three RB start, and then you realize you end up with the ninth pick and you just don't like your first running back choice. And maybe it's not a, a good spot for you to choose two running backs or something in your rankings and your projections. Okay, bail on it. Choose a different strategy. Maybe go zero RB. And then you've changed what you've done. You're going to grab, you know, Tyreek Hill or Kelvin Ridley were your first pick. And second pick comes around to you. You're grabbing whomever is there, you know, at that time. Devontae Adams, DK Metcalf. And you're grabbing these high upside guys. Comes back to, around to you in the third. And you're grabbing Terry McLaurin. Whatever you want to do, I think you just need to make sure that you're ready for whatever situation comes to fruition at your turn. Good luck. I'll see you out there on the battlefield. Hit that sub button on the way out. Until next time.